Hey y'all, Melissa with you today, and today's project is a super beginner project. This is one of the first things I often taught my students to sew when I was teaching in high school. So this is a drawstring bag. It's basically two pieces of fabric put together, and when you pull the ties, it closes up at the top. They're useful for gift bags. You can use them to store things, to separate things when you're packing, all kinds of different uses. And they're great for gifts too, if you're looking for a handmade easy gift to give somebody. So, what you're gonna need, fabric, ribbon, scissors, pins, a safety pin, your sewing machine, and this is optional, some pinking shears, and a measuring tape. This is not optional. Go ahead and gather all those supplies and then meet me back at the camera and let's see how to sew a drawstring bag. So materials wise, here's what you're going to need in addition to your sewing machine and thread. You need two pieces of fabric and these should measure 10 inches by 13 inches. I'm using quilting cotton for this and that's a really good fabric to start with. And then you need two 24 inch long ties. Um, I'm using twill tape to make mine, but you can use ribbon, you can use cording, as long as it isn't too thick, because these are gonna get threaded through twice. In order to thread those through, you're going to need a safety pin, or if you'd like, you can buy something called a bodkin, but if you're just starting out, a safety pin works fine. You're gonna want pins to hold your pieces together. And then we're gonna start out by pressing these. So there's one other little tool that you can make. Um, I have a piece of cardstock and I've just drawn lines on it. So this first one is a quarter inch, this one's three eighths inch, half inch, and so on. I use this to help me press precisely. So the very first step is going to be to take your fabric and on one short end, you want to press a quarter inch to the wrong side. So all I do is I get that cardstock nice and tight up in there and then I make sure the edge is matching up with my quarter inch line. If you don't have cardstock, you can use part of a greeting card, a cereal box, just it has to have a straight edge and then you mark from that straight edge. So let's go ahead and do that step. Let me get the iron and I'll show you how I press this. Okay, so I've got the ironing board out, I've got my pressing card, and I've got my fabric. And all I'm going to do is push, pull that one raw short edge to the wrong side, and then I'm going to follow it with my iron. And you can see how that leaves a nice, even pressed edge. I need to repeat that on the other piece. And there we go. So the next step after you've got those pressed is going to be to place your two pieces of fabric right sides together and you wanna match up the pressed edge and all the other edges. Then you want to measure from the top down two inches and you're going to want to mark that. And I just mark with a pin when I do mine. So let's measure down two inches from the top, and then I'm gonna pin these two fabrics together. And same thing on the other side, two inches from the top, fabrics pinned together. Okay, now that I've got those two inch points from the top marked, we're going to stitch this. We're going to stitch around, turn at the corner, over, turn, and back up. And we're going to do that with a 5 eighths inch seam. So let's step over to the machine. And on my machine, I've got this little tape indicator of where my seam allowances are, and I stuck that on my machine. This line here is going to be the 5 eighths inch mark for me when my needle is in the center position. If your machine doesn't have this, you can use something like washi tape, and you can measure over from your needle and put the tape on your machine to help you as a guideline of where you want to line up your edges. I am going to put my fabric in and I want the needle is going to start right at where I've got that pin. So right at that two inch mark. And 
And then what I want to do is I want to take a couple of stitches and then I want to back stitch. What that does, it's going to reinforce where that stitching happens so that it won't easily come undone. Then I'm just going to go ahead and stitch to the bottom. Stop with my needle down, lift my presser foot, and I'm going to turn my fabric. And you may want to mark for yourself. I didn't go quite far enough. One more stitch. You may want to mark for yourself when you hit that 5 eighths inch line. And then I'm going to stitch across the bottom. Stop with the needle down, lift the presser foot and turn, and then I'm going to stitch back to the last pin. Okay, now that I'm at that pin, pull that out and I'm going to back stitch. And then if your machine doesn't have a thread cutter on it, you're going to lift the presser foot, pull it out to the side, cut the threads, and then take it out of the machine. So what I have now is I've done that stitching, and I'm going to need to get the iron out again for the next step. So let me show you that. Okay, so the next step is going to be to take our bag and fold it in half kind of the other way. And really what you're trying to do is you're trying to get at this seam allowance up here. So if you can stick that over the nose of your ironing board, that's helpful. And then what you want to do is you're going to press that seam allowance open. Now the part that you didn't sew, the two inches at the top that you didn't sew, go ahead and press it so that it is in line with the part you did sew. And then once you've got that pressed open, you want to take the raw edge and fold it under towards your fold. Okay, we're just doing this to the top portion of the bag here. You want to do that on both sides and then press again. And then you want to repeat this process on the other side of the bag. And then next, we're going to head over to the machine and we're going to stitch down just this portion around that little opening on top. Okay, so I want the needle to land right on the edge of where I stitched, or sorry, where I folded. So on this inner edge. If your fabric doesn't start feeding through at first, pick your needle up, pick your presser foot up, move your fabric fabric very slightly and keep repeating that until your feed dogs catch on to your fabric and start pulling it through for you. So so just a little bit past the slit opening, turn, make sure the part that is going to go under the presser foot and under the needle is flat. Doesn't matter if there's wrinkles elsewhere, just make sure this is flat. And then sew across to the other folded edge. Turn and then sew back to the top. Cut your thread and then repeat that on the other side. So once we've sewn those little side pieces here, you can trim off any extra thread hanging out at the top. And then we're going to form our drawstring casings. So what you want to do now is fold down each of these edges 7 eighths of an inch. And then you want to pin, and you can use your cardstock guide if you made one, or you can use a ruler, or if you've done this before you can eyeball it. Okay, same thing on the other side. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch right along that casing on one side at a time. So I'm going to stitch this side and then I'm going to stitch this side. Let's go ahead and go to the machine and do that. Okay, so 
put this in the machine, you want to get right over to that split edge and be right on the corner. And then go ahead and start stitching. Take a few stitches and then back stitch. And then finish stitching across this side. And when you get to the other edge, you want to back stitch again. And then cut your thread and move to the second side. Okay, that concludes all of the sewing parts of this bag. Now all we have to do is put the drawstrings through. So again, I'm going to trim off any threads that were left from my stitching. And then let's talk about seam finishes. A seam finish is anything that you do to make sure that the fabric isn't going to fray along the raw edges. Now we finish these seams on top with stitching, but lower down I'm going to show you another seam finish which is the easiest one I think for beginners. And it's using these things called pinking shears. They've got these triangular shape, mountain shaped blades and what happens is when you cut they do a bunch of diagonal cuts in the fabric. Because there are all these diagonal cuts the fabric can't fray as easily along that edge because there isn't like one long thread to pull out. There's a bunch of little short ones that then got cut diagonally. So I'm going to go ahead and pink the edges of this bag. Now this is an optional step. This bag will still function if you don't finish these seams all the way, as long as you're not using it for heavy duty. And I'll link another video in the description below about other options for seam finishing besides pinking shears. Once I've got those edges pinked and finished, I'm going to turn my bag right side out. And then all that's left to do is thread the drawstrings through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my ties, I'm going to fold the short end in half, and I'm going to put that safety pin through both layers. Then I'm going to use the safety pin to go through that casing we made. And then I'm going to flip the bag over, and I'm going to stick the tie through the other side. So what I want is for both ends to be sticking out on the same side of the bag, like this. Then I'll take out my safety pin, and I want to tie those two ends together. Then I want to get the other tie, insert the safety pin, and I'm going to start on the side, that the, the opposite side from where the ties are coming out currently so that I'll end up with my ends on this side. And that's it. Once you've got the drawstrings put through, you're done. Just pull on the strings to close the top, and then pull on the top to open it back up.